do you still have random pirates or like you, no? Like in, 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 if if you don't have the expansion, you still have the random pirates. Right. But but you don't because I mean, like I said, we don't. If we, we replace a feature mm -hmm. with an expansion feature that is that it, that you have to pay for, mm -hmm. we don't want to remove the other. No, feature. of course, of no. course. Are there any events attached to this? Yes, uh, there that, are a whole bunch of interesting events. Anything but, anything related to like capturing giant silver fleets and stuff like that, or I don't know. I, I'm going to let that let leave that to be discovered by the players. Right, I'm sure I'm sure they'll be happy on the floor. I, I doubt we'll have any situations where people suddenly think. Why is the child of Satan born to my mother? Sort of thing. But no, sure we uh... we stayed away from the child of Satan. So far <laughs> <in before. laughs> well, well, we we do have, we do have the reformed yeah. uh, we do have the reformed religion now. Yeah. So it's uh, I'm sure the Catholics would disagree about yeah. that. But uh, yeah, so that's the privateers. It's it's not the most massive of functionalities, but it does impact trade overall because you have all yeah, these individual trade things, and you can it's, really it's, mess yeah, with it's people. One, well, exactly, and it's one of these new levers that you can pull. Mm -hmm. I mean, this expansion, I mean, the previous one had like three huge features, but this is it's more like spread across lots of areas. Right. So in the previous one, we had random new world, the tribal yeah. system yeah. and uh, something else. Yeah. Yes. And we actually added a bunch of stuff actually for Conquest of Paradise in this patch as such, well. Such as? Such as a couple of new, some new events and, you know, just to Ooh. make it more interesting. And of course, we cannot forget the colonial region. Australia. Exactly, like mm. I mentioned before, you can now, you can now have the colonial state of Australia. Magnificent yeah. Australia, as it should be named as yeah. well. Um, let's see here. Venice will get wrecked by the Ottomans because in this system. What do you think? What do you reckon? Will the will the well, AI use this the part the privateer system? And more importantly, is the privateer system attached to a technology level? No, it's not. So you can basically use it. Whenever, mm -hmm. uh, and I, from the Ottoman perspective, I don't know. If the, don't know if the I mean, the Ottomans could probably wreck a certain nation's trade, mm -hmm. but they're not going to make that much money from trade while right. doing it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if they wanted to do that, they could probably sabotage Venice trade. But Venice could also go together with another bunch of countries who also get fucked over by this, right? right. Uh, and, and declare a trade war. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the uh, war goal in the, in the anti-pirate war. Uh, is is the blockade one? Right. So if they can, if Venice can dominate the sea and blockade uh, the Ottoman ports, they mm -hmm. can still win that war. Mm -hmm. They, they don't. They don't need to fight the land battles as long as they can own yeah, the sea. Exactly. They're okay. If they, of course, if they let the Ottomans come into their country, they're going to lose yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Venice, Venice have the, this kind of interesting defensive position, though, that their capital is on an island. So as long as they hold that, that sea there. I, I remember from a really early version, oh no, in Crusader Kings this was, this wasn't EU4, is where you actually needed to take a ship to get off of Venice into the rest of Europe. There was no land bridge. <laughs> and so it was super annoying trying to get into Venice, but it was completely set up to uh, to save the, uh, save the country as much yeah. as possible, which was pretty crazy. But privateers themselves, um, if you sign the Anti-Privateer Act, does that mean you no longer have privateers? Uh, I don't think it has that effect at the moment, but that's something to think about. Because, you know, it needs to have some impact. Yeah. Because normally that's actually one of those things that we added, that we changed into policy. Ah, so there's okay. now an anti, uh, anti piracy policy mm -hmm. that gives you. Uh, I think it's plus five, uh, it's like plus two diplomatic relations, I think. No, it's at actually, least that's what it originally was. Yeah, it's a naval one, I right. know, I think. I had it in my. If you read today's dev diary, it's in the screenshot, I think. <laughs> Uh, well, that's cool. That's something. That's something we can look at maybe in the in the long term. It's it. I, again, the game is. This is probably one of the more complex games available in the market at the moment. Yeah, so there's probably. so many nooks and crannies of stuff where it's like, hey, be cool to add something here, and then it gets yeah. added to a list. And that's something as yeah, well. Yeah, we're probably it's... never gonna run out of ideas. No, right? exactly, because history is history, and then yeah. you pile alternate yeah. history on top of that, which makes. But with the four, we also try to stay true to to the basic vision, right, and try mm -hmm. to keep. To, to, to keep this kind of fairly balanced and, and, and easy to get into play experience that we have in EU. Uh, because, I mean, if you compare to our, our other games, we usually, I mean, Victoria is our, is our political, economical simulation right. game. I mean, mm -hmm. Crusader Kings... Is a family game. It, it's, it's our <laughs> Keeping it in it, the family. It's our yeah. <laughs> dynasty game, right? Character <laughs> game. And then right. you have Heart of Iron, which is our war game. Mm. Uh, but then EU is, is you probably... You know, something in the middle. It's it's our most game of all the games. If you oh, oh, on, a, on a complete side note, that is not exactly related to to wealth of nations. If you would have to describe EU four 
as as a game in three words something 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 simulator what would you what would you refer to it like empire building simulator i would probably say empire building empire because that's building? really what it is it's it's about dominating the game in your chosen strategy i mean the, the most obvious one is painting the map but then of course you can do it in other ways now now for example we added the trade company so you can sort of like dominate trade all over the world and right sort of like make sure that you know all the trade flows go down to mm -hmm. you and the more powerful you are as a trade nation yeah. the less the chance is that somebody will invade you because yeah or well, you can spread your religion to different parts of the world and set up your own goals like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. or you know pick your favorite nation in history and make mm -hmm. sure it gets its proper place it's not a game about world conquest guys it's a game about creating your empire putting your mark on history yeah exactly and right. i mean that's really what drew me to to eu in the first place you know that you know you can play it depending on how you play the game it's mm. like you get i mean i played eu i think eu1 was my first right. eu game that i played uh, and it's like if you play portugal and if you play austria it's like you bought two different games almost mm -hmm. so you can get like so many different playing experiences you can play like a colonial game or mm. you can play a you know a central european right cutthroat diplomacy game or whatever it's it's it has a lot of depth there is there is a lot of options yeah. to go to and i go can say that because i didn't work at it from the start so i'm not only bragging no exactly <laughs> so there's uh, it's not like your johan or anything like that no. um there are some nation changes actually um yeah colors I mean, for instance why is mali white now for instance now you hit me with a question i'm not prepared for i'm sure know. jimmy is to blame for this no it was i think He's doing the scripting. Uh, okay, but Mali has got a different color now. Yeah. So uh, okay, if you say <laughs> so. Uh, people, I was actually put. I put a video on on YouTube, which was a which was a time lapse using mm -hmm. uh, using the dynamic yeah. cam, and uh, it, people. The first question was people were asking a How did you get the camera at this angle? Mm -hmm. The second question was B Why didn't you take a top down angle? This looks terrible. And three was, why is Molly colored white? <laughs> this is like, is guys, where is your priorities? I, is it white? Isn't it yellow? It's more like an ivory. I, I, I only see an 8-bit. So what was it uh, before? I don't know. What was it before, guys, in chat? What was Molly colored before? Uh, it takes about 30, 60 seconds before it... Uh, uh, before it to come in. Molly is white, and that is racist. Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> Um, but uh, there's other nation changes. For instance, um, the Mamluks can now turn into Egypt. Yeah, What exactly. is the reasoning behind this? I mean, it, it's mainly flavor, I think, and to make it a bit more interesting in the future. Mm -hmm. um, because, Ooh, I mean... a reckless privateer. Ooh, Ooh. There you have one of these, uh, these events that I said that the players could discover from themselves. <laughs> and... Um, and, yeah, basically it's saying... Um, Enlisting the aid of privateers to wreck the trade efforts or efforts of our adversaries in mm -hmm. Lubeck uh, has proven beneficial to us, but also tends to attract unreliable and devious business partners. Our cap, our one captain, has become notorious for skirting the rules and ignoring treaties our privateers are supposed to abide by, but happens to be very efficient in raiding enemy ships. And one of the bonuses we can get is plus 25, uh, 15 uh, privateer efficiency, or we will not tolerate outlaws, and that will um, uh, lower our privateer efficiency for some reason. There's no malice. There's no bonus. Why? This is something I always wondered. Why is one always a plus, but why is it not a plus and a minus, and the other one in the same uh, it's way? Ma it's mainly supposed to be like that, Okay. so that it actually should be a choice. There is probably some sort of, you know... I think the tooltip doesn't really tell all here. So that's uh, okay, so basically uh, it, it does say Lübeck, Saxony, so it, it's blank. So I think it's something yeah. online is improves relationship to yeah, Saxony by like X amount of percent or something along the lines. Yeah, but we're, we're on nations, right? Yeah, we were yeah. on nations. I mean, we'd like to add more new nations because that's something that people like, right? You, you want to be able to... And, and nation forming is also something that you can do to to have something gold to strive for. Mm -hmm. Egypt, for example, was, you know, the, the new nation that was formed out of, of uh, that part of the Ottoman Empire in the in the fairly late game. Uh, so we wanted so like if you play say the Mamluks for example and you own Egypt, you can turn you can turn your nation into the 
Egyptian uh, Egyptian nation instead of like this Mamluk Sultanate that was based on, on the old slave soldiers. Right, and that'd be around here. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna get like a new flag, and one interesting side effect on that is that since you're actually gonna boosting your own culture province, mm. you're gonna go from from like the old time empire to more 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 of a modern state. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually boosts the base tax of all your core culture provinces. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what actually what the culture is called now. Can you click one of the Egyptian provinces? Uh, no, the culture it's, Egyptian. It's, it's all Egyptian yeah. already. Huh. So what we can do is well, let's go to the culture map mode actually and take a look. Oh, maybe that. maybe that culture has disappeared now in in this bookmark. Nubian, Egyptian, Toray. No, it's called something else. I think you need to start as a man looks this oh, bookmark. Fair enough. Mean, well, uh, then we'll, we'll look at that in a different yeah. way. Yeah, and I mean we we added a couple of other um, nations as well. We added the uh, my personal favorite. Kurland. Kurland, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's really an interesting country, and because I mean, the, the Duchy of Kurland that was independent was actually a fairly progressive state and, and fairly rich. And oh, actually there it managed, is. It's right here. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and it managed to um, to actually get colonies in Africa and, and in the West Indies. There it is, new country, Kurland. It even has a flag. Yeah. And it's at war with Sweden, and yeah. it appears to be winning. I think that actually the flag was in the game before, but now you have actually a decision to form Kurland. So if you play, say, you live, it's, it's an interesting strategy or an interesting game to play. To start as Livonia or Riga, which is mm -hmm. the... And you can secularize your order by, by switching religion to Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And then you can turn your nation into Kurland. Mm -hmm. And we actually have, if you look in the, uh, the idea screen, what we added from Kurland is actually their own specific ideas. Kuronian ideas, exactly. which is the legacy of the sword. Uh, sword privilegium, I, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, all the way up to Koronian Knights, Palaces of Macau, yeah. and I believe the, as soon as the decision hits, you turn you turn culture into Old Prussian, I believe as well. I read up on that decision before I came, and now I've forgotten. Actually. I believe I believe you turn into Old Prussian. Let me check here in the uh, uh, yeah Old Prussian. There you go. All oh, right. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So it's a more, you know, you turn your Kurland into a nation. And so it becomes an interesting game. You start off as Riga or, or the Livonian order. And mm -hmm. Riga is obviously much more difficult. But if you manage to sort of grab more provinces, you can form Kurland. And then you get a new set of ideas that you can sort of like build your country around. Is the decision based on being Prussian? So could you, in theory, start as a Teutonic order and no, create it's, Prussia it's, or Kurland? It's actually specifically based around... Uh, Livonian order. Livo no, uh, and Riga, hmm. because I think the Teutonic Order already has one of these. Yes, Prussia. Yeah, they they yeah. can become Prussia, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's this. This is sort of like adding a similar route to the other mm -hmm. other religious more flavor to exactly. the region, right? Uh, do they have their colonies? Because um, Courland is a very is historically a very interesting nation that it's tiny and it had colonies, I believe, in the Ivory Coast, but yeah. it's not in the game. No, place. I think it's too small actually to yeah. make it into a province. <laughs> they also have one in the West Indies, or oh, really, yeah. in the Caribbean. Yeah, uh, and, and the, Swe the Swedish the king Charles X actually made his best to to make them disappear from the map, but that pissed everyone else off, so oh. he had to release them again. Yeah, exactly, Belgium, Europe's. <laughs> Yeah, some people are. Uh, this is something that people are constantly asking about. Can we add Belgium to the game? No, we're not going to add Belgium to the game. It's terrible. We can. No, we will cannot. We? I, I, I will, I will, I will personally make sure no, it's no, not going to get in now. No, no, <laughs> it's a no, terrible no, country. Now we're getting back to this, you know, nationalities at the office. No, but it doesn't fit. Inside. It doesn't fit in the game. It's supposed yeah, to does, be. Does it's it supposed to be world? Austrian, Austrian low countries. In this case, Belgium. No. Oh. Belgian nation? No. Know, the most powerful nation in the world? Clearly. <laughs> clearly the most... Yeah, I don't know. It's, no, it, no. It, it, it's let's, let's switch topic. Let's not actually, you know... Let's, let's change the topic until you, unless, you, <laughs> unless you say something controversial. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, you know, Flanders and all that. Anyway, um, some more nation changes. Actually, I have another change, and it's tiny, but it's actually quite cool. Um, and we haven't really discussed this in any way. Uh, and you're you're like looking at me like oh, what the hell are you talking about? Um, if you're playing as Malaya now or Brunei, it be, it's easier to play them now. Why? And I'll tell you why. Land bridges have uh, bridges have been added uh, yes. through a whole bunch of provinces yeah. here. So no longer will you yeah. have need to need tons of cogs yeah. floating around everywhere to move yeah. troops around. And this this is actually I mean 
an interesting side effect of this uh, the, the fact that our office multiplayer games are now so big that we get this kind of you know com- we put competitive players in places like Malaya and Rune mm. and they will do their damnedest to find a good strategy to make that into a powerhouse right and if it's <laughs> physically impossible to do that or if it's not fun enough to play these kind of nations we we find out and and you know we can add these kind of little 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 improvements uh, what's the Spanish is uh, is SPA for yes. Spain? So if you go to Spain, for instance, and this is their colony in the Philippines, uh, there you go. You can move from uh, Manila to uh, Visayas without using boats now. And there's several places like this. Uh, there is another one here, so you can no longer have to do that. And there's another thing as well regarding rebels. No longer will rebels on the islands uh, become too big to uh, to take down. So basically, yeah. any any single single province islands are no longer very difficult to retake if there's. Yeah, if there's, we, we've uh, done a bunch of stuff with the mm-hmm. rebels, especially both. You know, as you said before, we buffed them and then nerfed them a little bit. <laughs> well, it may have something to do with the fact that at one point we had stacks of four hundred thousand rebels running around. Yeah, the map. because I mean, the, the combination <laughs> of some stuff, like you said, the, the stuff with the islands, right? We have to make you worry about rebels. We want, we want to sort of like if you leave them alone for a while, right? They will spawn rebels. Yeah, and it will keep rebels. on stacking yeah. up, right? Exactly, and and then then we sort of made this this rebel buff that we did. So, so we can actually get like 40,000 rebels in one go. Mm-hmm. And then you get 40, which you can if, you're, if you have a... St- because it's, it's scaled around how many, how many soldiers you can actually raise. Mm-hmm. But then you get 40, which you can manage. Then you can get 80, which maybe you can't manage. Then you get like... So we had to stop. Yeah. I, I remember one particular part of the multiplayer game is where we, um, we, were, we were playing... Somebody was playing as Great Britain. And I believe it was around... Uh, what was the, what's the uprising late game that had the Cromwellians, I think, or the Cromwell uh, stuff? Oh, is that a, is, is that a peasant war or is no, there is there is there it's, its own event series? It's an event series. Yeah. Uh, no, it was it must have been a peasant war in the UK then because the, all... pe- the peasant war became fairly dangerous. Yeah, it was like four hundred and fifty thousand yeah. peasants that yeah. were roaming the British countryside. Yeah. But which... I think that we've now gotten to the point that <laughs> that's the, you know in the balance that you know it's not not that bad as it was, but it's still like. When you get the peasant war, you draw breath, right? <laughs> right. You're just like, yeah. Ah, oh, that's minus three yeah. stab, and exactly. And, and I mean, <laughs> but I mean, if you use the features that we put in, like harsh treatment, for example, which is one of the new E4 feature, features, where you use military power to sort of suppress rebels, this is much more useful now and necessary. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which.